DayZ has recently gone on sale on PS4, so there's a large amount of new people that just don't know what they're doing. Maybe 90% of the people I meet say that they're new, and they all have a level of frustration with the game because they just don't know what to do. So in this video, I'm going to go from the beginning of my character's life to me getting the basics in order to survive, looting a military place, and then getting in a fight, win or lose. The point of this video is to give an insight into an experienced player's way of playing the game so you know what needs to be done. And this video isn't just for new people, it also can teach people who've been playing the game a couple new tricks to just survive easier. Anyway, let's get into it. Alright, I'm a man on a mission. Here's the goal. I'm gonna secure some food, get some decent clothing, go up. Get some military loot, and then get in a little bit of a scuffle with someone. And I'll take you guys along the way with me. But before you can even dream about finding guns and ammo, you first need to secure some warm clothing and food. Luckily for me, I'd spawn next to an orchard. Apples and other fruits might not be the most calorie-dense source of food, but beggars can't be choosers, even if the food's rotten. A little bit of a uh, orchard. Got a rotten fucking apple. There's another rotten apple. There's a decent apple. Now, it may be a little disgusting to eat a rotten apple, but it gives you the same amount of calories as a normal one and only has a low chance of making you sick. Sometimes, this is the only thing you have to eat early on and it's worth the gamble. Jesus, you got the, like, the stretched ball sack skin. Unfortunately, most houses are going to be empty, so this is just something you're going to have to sort of live with when you're starting Daisy. The majority of houses you search, you'll be lucky if you find one useful item in them. Now, these little grocery store looking things are great to loot. They spawn the kind of stuff you're actually going to want to have. Right there, you see there's a women's suit jacket. Way more space than a t-shirt. And uh, it's gonna keep me warm, and I'm only gonna look slightly feminine wearing it. Is this a dead gun? This is a dead gun. He does have a backpack on though, so... Seeing a dead person isn't necessarily a bad sign. Bodies can hang around for hours upon hours, and... You don't even know if he was killed by a player. Maybe the zombies got him. Now I found a pair of jeans. Wearing this in conjunction with the suit jacket meant I wouldn't even be cold, so now... All I had to do was find more food, but I wasn't starving either because I still had a rotten apple or two to eat. Yum. One of the worst mistakes I see from new players that really hurts their ability to find food is that they're always scared of the zombies and they're trying to sneak around them. You can see in this clip right here, I just beat two of them down with my fists without really taking any damage. The only time you have to worry about zombies is if there's eight of them, but in that situation, they can't swim and they can't go behind closed doors. So there's never a point in which you should die to zombies. Right there. Mad Monk Kvass. So that's like a little soda right there that'll actually get me a bit of food and a decent amount of water. So I'm gonna chug that right now. Someone looted that but they didn't see it because they didn't check the little bins. For whoever looted that building, this soda might have been the difference between life and death. That's why you always have to search thoroughly and check every little spot. I got a cross and that's a fucking thing. And she's got a can of sardines. That right there shows why it's worth it to kill zombies. They're not tough enemies, they're in the towns, so you might as well kill them while you're there. But now I gotta find something to open it up first. One of the things new players fail to realize is that your shoes break through use, and if your shoes are broken, you start to bleed just by walking. Now the game doesn't actually tell you when your shoes break, so you'll just start bleeding randomly, and depending on where you are and how many bandages you are, have, you could actually die if you're in the middle of a field. So keep in mind to maybe carry an extra pair, or at least switch your shoes out when you notice that they're getting damaged. Jesus. Imagine living in a room like this. You got the little gypsy rugs on the floor. Bright red paint. Oh, battery. Yeah, I should start eating that. 
Another can. Now the great thing with these, actually, I don't have any weapon. But I could bash skulls in with this. And I'm not going to be completely defenseless now. Full-size cans are actually surprisingly effective weapons. If you hit a guy in quick succession, you can knock him out. But even then, it does maybe double or triple the damage your fists do. And it's an embarrassing way to go. Imagine being the guy that dies from getting his brains bashed in with a can. Oh, we got a crowbar now. After a little more searching, this was a godsend. Not only would it be a better weapon than the can because it did more damage and was more durable, but I could actually open the two cans I now had in my inventory. The issue with this, however, is when you're using tools that aren't well designed for cutting, like a crowbar, you lose a lot of the contents in the can. So if I had to, I would open the can, but I would lose 50% along the way. If I could find something like a knife before I started starving, that'd even be better. At this stage, I had food security meaning I would go probably an hour before I started starving, but I would have to avoid sprinting and cold weather as both of those made you lose hunger much faster. Now I can start looking for other items that I needed, like guns. Oh, there we go. Can't, you know. This unassuming little gold tin is exactly what any survivor insurance needs. The thing takes up less space, can be opened just with your hands, and is worth maybe twice as much as a can of beans. Having this one item doubled how much food I had. Basically, what I'm saying is if you haven't been picking these things up, you've been making some pretty big mistakes up to now. The next move from here was to use the water pump. Now, experienced players know where to find these in every town, but I understand that new people need help, so what you're going to want to do, if you haven't already, is download the I Survive app, spelled I survive, but with a Z, it's weird, whatever. It's basically how you open up a map for this game. And it shows you where the water pumps are. So the only issue is finding out which town you're in, and at that point, water is no longer an issue. One of the things in DayZ you want to do as soon as possible is move inland. There's less people there, so there's more loot. And the loot, the further north you go, the higher quality it is. I now had a decent stock of food, and my thirst was quenched. This meant it's time to get inland and actually start gearing up. Even as you continue to move inland, you should still loot houses. Because you're always going to want more food, and there's a chance of guns and ammo spawning in them. It's lower than it is up north, but there's still a chance. Shit. What's up? What's up, man? You're hey, friendly. Yeah, I'm friendly, man. I just saw you walk with the gun and I got fucking scared. <clears throat> yeah, I'm trying to hit north. I'm trying but to hit north. I'm gonna run out of food. So I'm probably just gonna reset. You if hungry? you wanna kill me, you can. I got a can I could share with you if you want. No, no. I think I'm just gonna reset. You want me to kill you? Yeah, sure. Alright, good luck in your next spawn, man. <coughs> Not exactly the most humane way to go out, but, uh... Let's see what he had. Oh, the dude literally just had a shotgun and that's it. Okay. One of the things I love about DayZ and survival games in general that was highlighted by that encounter is just how unpredictable human beings are. It adds a lot of gameplay value when you don't know what's gonna happen. As I continued to move slightly further inland, I came across a hunting camp. Now this would have a clinic, which would spawn medical loot, and then a couple huts that would spawn hunting stuff. Mostly I needed a knife, but because I wasn't that far inland, I was unlikely to find anything of real value in here. I did find some pills though, but not the fun kind, just the sort that help you keep alive or whatever. You know, useless stuff. The chicken would be a good source of food, except I didn't have a knife to skin it. I did still have a couple hunting cabins left though, so I would check those and hopefully find a knife. Oh. 
There we fucking go. Now I'm looking epic. Oh shit. <laughs> these crusty old men coming for me. This is what I was talking about when I said zombies aren't a threat. I took just about eight of them on an open field with what by all accounts is a subpar weapon. A shitty little crowbar. A knife. As a way of all the crusty old men saying thank you for beating them off, they gave me a knife. Which, if you remember, the chicken needs skinning. Imagine having to skin a chicken with, like, just looks like a damn rock. Once you skin any sort of animal, you're presented with two issues. The first is that your hands are now covered in blood. You gotta go find a source of water to clean them off. This can be done with a bottle of water, a pump, or just a stream. Luckily for me, there's one right where I killed all the zombies. Now the second is that I have to make a fire to cook the chicken. And this means using a fireplace. Luckily again, there's one nearby. To wash your hands, simply walk up to the source of the water and you'll be given an option to wash them. Five seconds later, you're safe to eat stuff again. If you don't wash your hands, there's a decent chance of you getting sick from eating anything out of them. The next part is making a fire, and this might seem a little bit daunting, but it's not that bad. First thing you need is a fuel. Firewood works well, but sticks can also work. Obviously, they last less. The next thing you need is some tinder, and that would just be a singular rag. And final thing is something to light the actual fire. This can be matches or a lighter. And the last thing you do is you just stick your chicken on top, and you sit there and you wait, and eventually you'll see your chicken turns brown orangish. At this point, it's going to take off the fire. An important thing to keep in mind about cooked meat, or really any other cooked food, is that if you put it in your jacket or pants, they will actually keep you warm. So you can see it's getting kind of dark where my character is, and it's also raining. Now this massively impacts your warmth, but because I have those two cooked chicken pieces in my jacket, I'm managing to keep warm for a much longer time. If you get to a stage where you have four or five pieces of cooked meat, you'll survive even the heaviest rainfall in the coldest nights. I then ran inland for a while longer. There's a good amount of distance between some of the towns, which is why it's important to pack lots of food. The chicken was keeping me warm so my food wasn't going up too quickly and, you know, I could eat it too. So I wasn't worried about starving. Now this town was a decent bit farther inland, so there would be less people, so more loot. But besides that, there's nothing particularly interesting about it, so I'll cut the majority of this out and only come in every once in a while to tell you tips or if I find something important. Oh, Jesus! The guts are missing. The guts and the bones are missing. Finding a corpse decently inland is a bad sign. Because there's not as many people inland, it means there's been someone around fairly recently. This yellow building up here with the circular thing on the top is a rural police department. Even if these have been looted recently, they're still worth going after because zombies with police vests can spawn. Like this one right here. Now, although they're called stab vests, they actually offer more protection against bullets than stabs. 50%. But they only have 30 HP, so they'll only save you from 30 damage maximum. But that is enough to save you from a sniper shot to the chest. So it's always worth getting one of these when you can. Let this be an example to you of how Daisy can just be weird sometimes. On the side of the road, I found a school backpack with a shotgun loaded into it. Uh, I already had a shotgun, but this one had it. two shells loaded into already, which mine didn't. So, now I had some ammo. All because of a school backpack. Remember, this game isn't set in America either. Some strange occurrences. Oh, 
Mosin. The lesson from this year is to be patient and search every house. This was one of the last couple houses in the town I even had left to loot. And I found the one gun that I had a lot of ammo for, and I mean, I just loved using this thing. It's iconic and one shot 10 enemies' chests, and they just drop dead. At this point, I was just gonna slit open my ears and listen for any shooting, and just run in that direction. See what I could get up to, and show you guys how PvP is played. So at this stage now, I've got lots of food. I've got armaments. And now I'm bored, so I'm just going to go look for some people to kill. I hear shooting, so we're going to go towards that. One of the other things to keep in mind is shooting can be heard from literally kilometers away. But based on how loud it was, I could guess that it was maybe a kilometer or five to ten minutes of running away. Not far. I'm getting closer. <sighs> I should have expected it. I was going to Kamishovo. A town that has a reputation for being small, yet having one of the highest player spawn numbers. People like coming down here to kill fresh spawns because it's a huge ego boost. No wonder the shooting was coming from here. It always seems to come from here. How does everything always end up in Kami? I'm always in fucking Kami. There was people up on the roof and I could instantly tell they had guns. I wanted to assume the best, and wouldn't just start shooting. He aimed his gun at me though, so it seemed like it was time to take the gloves off and start shooting. I didn't know what gun he had, but I knew he didn't have a vest. If I could pop him once in the chest, he'd be game over. I missed, but heard people approaching from the side. the fuck out of here. I didn't see him fall, but I heard his body hit the floor. He was dead, alright. I took a shot at this guy, because I thought he'd probably pick up the gun and start coming after me, but I missed. Jesus, this is laggy. God fucking damn it, dude. I'm literally getting about 10 frames. Unfortunately, situations like that are very common, at least on the PS4, where the game just shits out and you have no audio and everything's just running like ass and people are teleporting around. The best thing to do in this build, in this situation, is hide in the building until the game sort of catches up because the zombies become much more dangerous when they're lagging. Right, here's what I'll do. I'm gonna hide out in this building until my game stops fucking lagging. Notice how weird the audio is. Right, my audio's back. I killed one of them. Shooting attracts zombies, and there was, from what I could hear, maybe six or seven of them outside. And if there was a guy hunting me, I couldn't just go out and start meleeing them. So I would chill out in here until they lost aggro on me. Six shots, two shells. That's what I'm working with right here. There's someone outside. Because the zombies are attacking. I was able to tell based on the way that the zombies were screaming that there was someone outside. He opened a door. He's in there. You know what I, mean? I could hear he was in there, and he knew I was up here because of all the zombies outside. Only one of us was walking outside of this house. <laughs> Make sure to use your camera to your advantage when you can, like I did here. I could see him, but he couldn't see me. <laughs> Fucking uncrowd.
fuck out of here. There we go. <laughs> that guy was shooting at me with semi-auto. Fights in Daisy don't always come down to aim. Sometimes it's technique that wins the fight, like what I did right here. I knew that if I stood still while I chambered my next round, I was as good as dead. His gun could do a lot of damage, but it wouldn't kill me in one shot. So what I had to do was get out of his sight, chamber the next round, and shoot again. So I ran while chamber the next round, turned around, and shot him. And this is what allowed me to win the fight. I missed my first three shots on him, but because I was able to stay out of his sight line, I was able to avoid his fire. I know that for a fact, if I had just stood still and chambered the next round without running, he would have clapped my ass cheeks right then and there. Another important aspect of PvP is keeping your nerves in check. I was able to do that incredibly well in this fight, and this guy just got caught up on a lot of actions. Like when I ran past him, he still continued shooting because he wasn't thinking clearly. He didn't realize that I had actually run away and didn't think to adjust the sight lines. Now this isn't something you can just learn. You have to experience PvP until you get over what's known as gear fear, which is where you're afraid of losing your shit. I wasn't afraid here, so I was able to survive. That's what allowed me to actually think ahead and run away from him as he was shooting. So the main thing is, this is actually a lot more of a mind game than you would think. Although it's fast paced and aim will get you far, if you're not thinking ahead, you're not going to win. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please do like and subscribe. 22 minutes. If you've made it this far, you owe me at least one like.